Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sorry, that was my side. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, today we'll be discussing a concept called sukun. Now, the fact that we've reached this lesson tells us that we've reached a huge milestone in uh, our study of the Arabic script. Because we now will be completing the basic vowel system in the Arabic language. We spoke about the short vowel, which is the haraka. Then afterwards, we spoke about the med, which is basically the long vowel, which are extensions of the short vowel. And today we'll be discussing what happens when a letter has no vowel. Now, these three things, the haraka, the mad and the sukun makes up the core of the Arabic sound system, vowel, vowel system. All other concepts that's going to be coming, so the shad, uh, the tanween, those things are combinations, you can say, of a haraka and sukun, of what we already know. However, this particular lesson, the sukun, I always say, and I always believe this, is the most important concept in the Arabic language in terms of reading. When the letter has no vowel, and here is two reasons why the, the sukun I consider to be the most important concept. When the letter has no vowel, you, it is now just you, and the, the sound of the letter that's left. So the sound of the letter becomes magnified with a magnifying glass. So challenges begin to appear. So if you struggled with a letter, with the harakat, you are definitely going to find more challenges now. Now, is that a bad thing? Never. This allows you to identify exactly where and what the challenges are. The second thing why I consider this sukun to be the most important concept is because it is when letters have sukun do we find that most the tajweed concepts come to surface. I would say 80%, if not more, of the tajweed concepts applies when letters have sukun. Have, a, have this concept that we're going to be speaking about today. And I think it's very appropriate then that I just give a very short, very, very short and incomplete introduction to what Tajweed is, to give you perspective as we move on through this lesson. So, since the, era of the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language, we have to kind of think about why was it revealed in the Arabic language? And why was it revealed at that time? Now let's speak about the time. The time when the Quran was revealed to the Arabs at the time in the Arabian Peninsula, at that time, the tribes at that time, they were, Arabic has reached a level of, we can say completion in terms of many things, not only in terms of pronunciation, but in terms of poetry, speech, many dimensions of the language. And so when the Quran was revealed, it was revealed during this time. And the challenge was set with that in mind. With the Arabs already being most eloquent and the Quran being revealed on their language. And that is how the challenge also was, the perspective of the challenge comes in, in, in place. We, they had to come as a challenge with anything, small chapter like this Quran. Now, as time went along, after the Prophet ﷺ's demise, many people began to read the Quran in Arabic, and like any language began to, you can say, either develop or you can say, break down. And many other dialects and things came into the language and things were lost. It was then important, right, for a science to emerge that's going to protect and document how exactly is this, the Arabic language should be pronounced and spoken 
when reciting the Quran. And it's really about preserving the clarity of the letters and exactly how the Arabs at that time used to pronounce it, knowing that they were the most eloquent at that time. Now, with that introduction, when we're speaking about Tajweed, now, from a practical perspective, from uh, when we look at a setting, uh, we learn to read and we speak about Tajweed, where does Tajweed apply? Does it apply to all the time? Is everything Tajweed, every second thing we're gonna learn about Tajweed, does it apply to all the letters in a big way? I would say no. A lot of things are kind of very, you can say intuitive. It's common sense, but they documented it anyway. For example, like saying the letter th, one of its qualities is that e should flow. Th. Now, as you can uh, understand from that, it's quite logical, right? It's nothing. Um, like if, if you can pronounce the letter th, I don't really need to tell you that the e should flow. Other rules will get more technical. However, the rules that you need to learn don't apply to every single letter. Most of the letters are quite fine as we learned it in the course. That's all you need to know. However, some letters, they be, once it has a sukun, then some rules began to begin to fall in place. And most of the Tajweed rules, the complicated Tajweed rules, are really restricted to a few letters. In fact, there's one letter that I would say has about a quarter, right, of the Tajweed that studied on a basic and intermediate level. A quarter of the rules, right? Basic when you're studying Tajweed, it's about that letter when it has a sukun, right? So that is basically a um, uh, 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 just an, 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 an insight, uh, and I think it's appropriate speaking about that now that we're dealing with the sukun. So what's the purpose of this lesson when you speak about sukun? In this lesson, we wanna tie everything together that we spoke about in the previous lessons. We want to build a foundation with this concept of sukun. A foundation that will you will take through, right through on out your um, a journey studying the Arabic language, studying Tajweed, um, that you tools that you could use that will always kind of guide you and give you some confidence when dealing with this concept. So with that, we will start with a lesson, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay. Can I just indicate if anyone is ready? Because there's been complete silence in the group. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So the letter tha, let's start with the letter tha. We said the letter tha has the th sound. Okay. If we add the fatha, it becomes tha. Yes. If we add the kathra, kasra, it becomes thi. Okay. If we add a dhamma, we know it becomes thu. We remove the fatha kasra dhamma, nothing on the. Now it is just th. And it will, when it is in that state, it will get the circle above the letter. And that circle is called sukun, meaning stationary or meaning there is no vowel on this letter. Now, let's take some notes. Let's see if let's have some notes on the sukun. The sukun is a circle above the letter indicating that the letter has no harakat. Doesn't have a, e, no, u. There's another important thing that we need to know. And that is the sukun has no additional sound. Very important. Right, so like the fatha, the kasra, and the dhamma, the dash above, below, and the ribbon above the letter, it has sounds, a, e, u. The sukun has no sound, absolutely no sound. So whether the sukun is there or not, it's not going to change anything. If you put nothing above the letter, the letter still has no sound, no additional sound besides the actual sound of the letter. Okay. Now let's apply this 
on all the letters that we completed thus far. And now remember, the way I am going to sound the letter right now is the way that it will be pronounced in words. And we're going to speak about reading words with Sukun in detail. So let's just do the sounds. So letter B is going to be B. If it has a Sukun, B. So the Sukun, why do we add a Sukun if it has no, if it doesn't have a sound? The Sukun is to tell us that this letter don't have any additional sound. So that is why you won't always see it in a text. However, in the Quran specifically, you will see it most of the time because everything has to be very clear. They can't leave anything for guessing. The letter ta for the sukun will be t. t. The letter tha will be th. The letter jim is going to be like this, the sukun. J. J, J, just like that. And the letter Ha is going to be <sighs> no Ha, no He, no Hu, just <sighs> the letter Kha is going to be <sighs> okay. the letter Dal will be D. D, D. The letter ذال, remember, ذال will be just ذ, ذ. The letter ra will be just r. It's a tongue flap. R. Finally, the letter zay will be z, z. Can you see how the sound become really just focused and clean and clear? So this practice, so if you struggle with any of these letters, that's perfectly fine. It is here when you practice the letter with a sukun that the letter becomes improved. Okay. The next logical thing that we're going to speak about is how to read the sukun in words. That's the application. So far, what we discussed was sukun in a nutshell. That's sukun. It is, it is so easy because it's it's literally. Nothing. It doesn't have a sound. It's just telling us that this letter don't have an additional sound. So it's literally nothing. However, it's when we read plight in words that it doesn't become complicated, but you really need to know how to do it. Is everyone's fine thus far? Before we go into the application. And we're going to take each letter, one letter at a time. OK. So we can see here, put two words here with a letter which has a sukun highlighted. Excellent. Now, in order to speak about how to read a sukun in words, we kind of have to have to align it with the previous concepts that we study, that we studied, the, the haraka, the mad, then the sukun, and we'll see how they fit in together. And they, in the sukun, once you, you mastered how to do the read, the harakat, the mad, and the sukun will be no different. Okay, so let's start with the harakat, reading the harakat in words, which we spoke about already. We'll just do it in a different way. Reading the mad in words, and then we will see reading the sukun in words. So this is a very important, a very practical part of this lesson. Okay. Okay. So reading the harakat in words. So here you see we have a word with just harakat. There's no mad in this word. Um, there's no sukun, it's just harakat. So the, it's, this is going to be very simple. We want to break the word down into smaller units. So here we have the first unit, we see it's a thu. Okay. Thu. The second unit is B. And the final unit here is Ta. So we have Thu, B, Ta. 
su bi ta. That's all that 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 is that is in this word. There's nothing extra. Then all you would have to do once you've broken it down in your mind, you now just have to join the individual units to form a word. Thu bi ta. Okay. Let's speak about reading the mad in words. Okay, so let's first apply the same strategy that we use for the harakat and let's see if it's any good. Okay, so we have the the, the first unit. Then we have the alif mad. We have a ba. Now, as you can see already, this is going to become a challenge because how do you read the alif mad if it's an extension of the fatha before it? So what you want to do is, so firstly, that would be the wrong way to do it. The correct way to do it is to take the alif, or the letter of mad, you add it to the letter before it. Yes, and you will read them as one unit. The, the, you look at them as one unit, then the ba, see there's the next unit, and then finally, there's another mud, well mud, and you see how I joined it to the letter before it. And if you look at the units of the letter, you'll see here it's three parts. The, ba, and hu. The, ba, hu. Join the units together and we have the, ba, hu. The, ba, hu. So if you, if you break the, the word up in units, you'll see it's actually only three smaller units and not actually one, two, three, four, five letters. So you read the mud plus the letter before it as one unit. Let's do another example of the mud. So here we go. Harithi. We have one, two, three, four, five letters. Harithi. What you want to do is take the letter of mud, add it to the letter before it, and look at it as one single unit. Ha. Ha, take the next unit, ri. And finally, we have again a mad add to the letter before it, and we have ha, ri, thi. Ha, ri, thi. Ha, ri, thi. Three units joined together. Okay. Now, when we speak about reading the sukun in words, it is going to follow the same strategy, the same steps that we've done when reading, that we did when reading the mad in words. Let's have a look. Let's take the letter tha. So here we have this word teth butu. Teth butu. There's a tha with a sukun, and we know the sa when it have a tha, when it has a sukun, it's going to be We're going to read that in a word. So you're going to take that sound. We're going to take the sound and we're going to add the letter before it, the ta. So the ta in the s will form one unit and become tas. 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 Break it into syllables. Bu, tu. Tas, bu, tu. Tas, bu, tu. And this is what you will apply to every time you see a sukun. Tas, bu, tu. Tas, bu, tu. The reason why I'm going very slow is because if this is the first time you're learning the sukun, you really need, uh, you're really going to benefit from the slow explanation. Tas, bu, tu. Okay. Let's use another word. Here we go. Here the sukun, same letters, just as a dhamma before it. So there's a th before it is a two. So we want to say two plus the th is going to become tooth. Tooth. So I said it pronounced it quickly as one syllable. Tooth. Tooth. And then we take the other letters, B and the two. Tooth. B2, and then we join them together. Tooth B2. Tooth B2. Final example 
in this way. We have the B over here. B. So far, it's B, B. The letter with the sukun, we are going to read the letter before it as one unit. And we see the letter before the tha is a ha with the kasra, hi. So you're going to read it as one unit, as one syllable, hith. Baba hith. Baba hith. And we read it as one word, baba hith. Okay. Now we want to go through each letter one by one and make see if they, let's we want to touch up on the sound if there's any important small tajweed rules we'll speak about it but so far I want to know is everyone with me on how to read a sukun in a word are there any beginners that found Severe difficulty with that. Would you are you following me at least? So it's very important. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Okay. Let's speak about the ta. And I'll get your questions here. The ta in a word is going to be exactly like this. The sound. Let me amplify my microphone. Remember, I said the sound that we, we, we say the letter has when it has a sukun, it must have that exact sound in a word. You just plug in the word. Okay, let's see. B, ra. Remember, we said the ra is going to be ra, like rock. Ra. B, ra. Then yeah, we have a little sukun. We're not going to say za, t, za, t. No, one syllable, zat, zat. So it's important to take note of two things reading a sukun. The first thing is the sound of the letter, which has the sukun. In this case, it's t. And the second thing is the letter before it. What the letter is and what vowel does it have? In this case, it's the za. Now, we cover the letter before, so you should, should have no difficulty with the letter, Z. Then we add the letter with the sukun as one unit, as one syllable, Z. So, ba, ra, Z. Ba, ra, Z. Okay. Here we go. Tha, bit. Tha, bit. Tha, bit. Listen to the ta at the end. Tha, bit. That release of iri, that's an important component of the ta, of the Arabic ta. Finally, tut ba, tut ba, tut ba, tut ba. Right? So, tut ba, if you can see the, we read, we read them in yes so, yeah, so here's the raw i have it in blue right so that is barazat thabit tut ba let's move on to the ha remember this is very important we're doing it later later but the sukun is like that it's it's very important that the remember the letter is going to be stressed so it's not something that's going to become come really naturally something that you have to practice. Here we go. Dah. Dah. Can we see? We add the da plus a little of the sukun. Dah. It's one syllable. Ra, ja. Dah, ra, ja. Dah, ra, ja. Here we go. Bah. You see, I went from the ba to the h. Bah, ri. Bah, ri. Bahri. Here we go. Tuh. Tuh. Tuh is one syllable. Tuh. Ba. Bu. The mad. Tuh. Ba. Bu. Tuh. Ba. Bu. Through the letter Kha. Here we go. Ta plus the Kh as one syllable. 
تخ تخ رجو تخ رجو تخ رجو تخ رجو So yeah, here we go again. Tukh, the kha with the dhamma, the kha and the before it is a ta with the dhamma, which is tu, plus the kh is tukh, ra, ju, and that ra should have been blue. Tukh, ra, ju, remember the ra is ra, like rock. Tukh, ra, ju. Dizal. Now I underlined the th there so that we know it's not like the like in the letter th. This is th, like in the letter thal, th, as in that. Here we go. Tath, and we see the ta plus the th. We quickly pronounce it. Tath, tath, not tath, tath as one syllable. Tath, ru. Tadru, Tadru. Here we go. And then the ra should have been blue. When the ra has a fatha, it's a like ra, rock, rock, ra, juz, ra, juz, ra, juz, ra, juz, ra. Two more letters before we. Moving to some special letters. The letter Ra has the R sound. R. And you can repeat after me during these exercises. So in this word over here, Ta. Yes. Yes. So, so you go back. So we can't go back to the, 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 letter, the collision of mad. We will discuss that in detail. But the answer is yes. So Ta. Dar. Ta. ذر ت ت ذر ت. So you see, even though the letter, the the concept of sukunia is in the middle of a word, right? It's not really in the beginning. It's not at the end, but we still read it with a letter before it as one syllable. So in this this word is made out of three parts: the ت, the ذر, and the ت. ت ذر ت ت ذر ت ت ذر Ta. Here we go. There's a letter ra, the sukun. The letter before it is d. So here we have ta, dir, ta, dir, dir, ta, dir. The letter ra with the sukun, and the letter before it is a tu. So we're going to read the tu and the r as one syllable, tur. Tur ba, tur ba, tur ba. The letter Z. Here we go. Remember, blue means ha, means in that sound a. So ha, with the z sound, the z with the sukun, khaz. So notice that we still have to pronounce the ha in the ra. All the letters that has the a sound, like the ra, rock, ra, kha, we still have to pronounce him in that way. With the sukun as one unit. Khaz, 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 and then ra, ju, khaz, ra, ju, khaz, ra, ju, khaz, ra, ju. Okay. Again, letter zai. Before it is a ha with a za, with a ha with a kasra. Going to be his, he plus z is one syllable. His, 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 ba, his, ba. Here we go. The za is a z plus the two before it. Two plus z, one syllable. Tuz, tuz. Tuz ri, tuz ri, tuz ri. Okay. Before we move on, the next letters, the next three letters, there's three letters we didn't do. They're a little special. 
How did you guys find this so far? You found it helpful? If you are a beginner, let me know if you understood, right? So obviously this needs practice. But if you found it helpful, you found it understandable, something that you can practice, do let me know. Yes, needs a lot of practice. Let me tell you, let me tell you that I, ha I have a student that uh, I didn't teach him the sukun in this way. I taught him the sukun the way it is normally taught, normally taught. And it took months to get comfortable with the sukun. Months. This explanation, this way, it's, it's not my that I invented, but to, to, to put it over in this way, it took me months of research, months of research. However, what I can tell you is that if you follow the strategy, it will speed up your process of getting comfortable with the sukun. There is, if you are a beginner, there's absolutely no way that you are going to suddenly master the sukun after this lesson, but it will speed up the process from months into possibly weeks, right? And let me tell you this before we move on about why, about why the sukun is so hard to practice. If you have a letter, let's take the harakat, the a, e, u. If you take any individual letter, let's say a, the letter ha, we want to practice the letter ha with the harakat. You have three possibilities. Only three possibilities. Ha with the fatha, it's ha. Ha with the kasra is hi. Ha with the dhamma is hu. So if you want to practice and master the harakat on the letter ha, you only have to repeat three things. Ha, hi, hu. The same with the mad. What happens with the sukun? You see, before the sukun, before the sukun, you can either have any one of the 29 Arabic letters or 28. Let's say 28. Let's be generous. Any one of the 28 Arabic letters can appear before a letter with a sukun. So now you already have 28 possibilities. But now here's the thing. Any one of those 28 letters can have either a fatha, either a kasra, or either a dhamma. So now I have a calculator here. So if I take 28 times 3, that's 84. So that means if I have to say, for example, take a little tha and say tath, okay, teeth, okay, tooth, okay, let's, let's put the letter ba before it now. Bath, beef, booth. I say, okay, let's put the letter G in before it. Jeth, jith, juth. You are going to read each letter with a sukun 84 times. There's 84 possibilities for each lesson, for each letter. And that's beside the letter that still come after the sukun. So if you don't have a strategy, and this is what happens, when you don't have a formula, how do you approach the sukun? You are going to try to sort of find a pattern and try to master each combination on its own. Now, I'm no mathematician, but let's say 84 times 28. So you have to master 2,352 combinations if you want to sort of organically master the sukun. So now that method can be used for kids. However, if you are, especially if you are newly learning or if you haven't grasped the concept of sukun yet, take this method and master the method and that will speed up your journey towards uh, mastering the sukun. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, these letters are no different, right? These letters are the same. It's three letters with a sukun, right? Letter ba, letter dal, and jim. So the letter ba with a sukun is b. The letter dal with a sukun is d. And the letter jim with a sukun is J. But now, these letters, they have, I'm going to tell you, this is a, a tajweed element that is added to these letters. Let's first 
dive into it. And later on, we will tell you why to have these concepts, if you still don't understand. Basically, the little B, when it has a sukun, this is how it's going to sound in a word. B, B, like the B over here in biscuit. B, B, biscuit. So take that B over there in the word biscuit, right? B, B. Let's apply it in this word over here. So we have the two. Then we have the b, two b, two b, b like biscuit, b, 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 two b. So we're still going to apply the reading the sukun with the letter before it as one con as one syllable. However, the, this letter it has an extra sound. So instead of being two two, two two, it's going to be two b two, b like b biscuit, two b two. And the reason for that is because this letter sound, when it has a sukun, there's a complete blockage. Tub, tub. So you actually don't know what letter I'm saying if I just close it. Tub. Am I saying P? Am I saying, uh, am I saying wh what letter? If you, if you don't see my mouth, you won't know what letter I'm saying. So that is why Tejweed necessitates that this letter become clear. How to make it clear? by adding the, a sort of a jerk sound to it, right? And that sound is specifically like the sound in biscuit, b. So instead of trying to imitate me, right, to imitate the sound, which is very difficult actually, to just imitate the sound, the jerking sound, try to apply it as I'm telling you here. The b in biscuit, that is how you read the b with the sukun. Two b two, two b two. Let's look at another word. Yeah. Re plus the b, riba, riba, riba. You see, not rib. Now, if you find this very difficult, if you are beginning, you find it very difficult, you can say rib and don't add the bound. Just say rib as you read it. It's okay. However, if you if you get comfortable, try your best to do it and focus a little and add that little if it to kind of. To, to just remember this, and practice it, it's really worth it. It's going to save you so much time later on learn that you read. So, re plus b, like basket, basket, b, b, riba, 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 ha, riba, ha, riba, ha, riba, ha. Last example. Here we have a khu plus the ba. With a sukun, which means it's b like biscuit. Khuba, khuba, khuba ra, khuba ra, khuba ra. Now, before you feel overwhelmed, let me tell you how many letters does this kind of rule apply to? Not many, right? So it's really a few letters that you just have to remember them individually. We only done three so far. There's a total of five that have this effect, we can call it. Right? The first letter is the letter B. So you remember the letter B with the sukun? Biscuit. B. Tu ba tu. Riba ha. Khuba ra. And I'm sure you might have heard this when you're listening to recitals. So we're doing with time. Doing okay. How you guys found this concept? So the next, the next two letters we can do is going to apply the same thing. There's nothing new. How did you find it? Are you, are you following? Okay, let's take the next letter. So we've done the letter B. The next letter is the letter Dal. The letter Dal, when it has a sukun, will sound like this. This, the D in the word disk. D, 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 as in disk. D, 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 D. So not D, not D. Not do, just say the word disk and you take the SK away, the perfect dial with a sukun, 100%. So let's apply it in a word. Here we go. T plus the D is tada, tada, tada. We add the re, tada, re, tada, re. Very easy. Once you got the sound and you plug the two units together, you have the perfect word. Tadri, 
tadri. Remember the dal with the sukun is da, like desk. If you're struggling, you can say tad, tadri, tadri. Then you then know that, okay, I have to work on the sound of the dal. So the first letter is ba, second letter is dal. Okay, let's do another word here. D, d, like desk, d, b. We have the b plus the d, bad, 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 ru, bad, ru, bad, ru, bad, ru. Okay. The last letter with a sound, and remember, I'm going to tell you why. I already told you, but I'm kind of going to show you why. Okay. So the j over here is going to be like the j in the word just. Like if I tell you, give me the gist of the matter, j, that exact sound, memorize his word. With the ba, it's basket, b. With the dal, it's dusk. With the jim, it's just, right? So j, 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 j. That's the exact sound. Let's apply it in a word. The ta plus the j, like in just, j, 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 taj, taj. Ri, tajari, 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 and you have a perfect word applying this concept um, called in English, you can say the jerking sound or the bouncing effect. Like I said, you just memorize these letters and it's really going to be worth your while. You will really thank me uh, in the coming months and years as you study further. Okay. Tuja, remember like ja, like as in just. Tuja, 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 tuja ba, tuja ba, tuja ba, tuja ba. Perfect word. Remember, if you're struggling, you can say as you read it there, tuj ba, tuj ba. Note that the, the letters with this effect, I put it in blue, light blue. The, the, the letters with the R sound is in dark blue. The letters with this sound is in light blue. Now, the reason why I put these, chose these, lit, these colors is not haphazard. If you buy the Tajweed Quran, the Quran which has highlighted the Mus'haf with highlighted uh, uh, Tajweed concepts, uh, you'll find these exact colors in that Mus'haf. So if you do later on purchase that Mus'haf and decide to read from there as you learn Tajweed, you'll already be acquainted with the, with the colors and know when to apply these concepts. Lastly, here we go. Dah. So we've done that's a normal how with the Sukun. Da plus the da as one unit. Raja, Raja. Remember, we're not saying Raja because the Ra is still Ra with the Fatha is A, like Ra, rock. And then we have the J sound, like just Raja, 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 Da, Raja, Da, Raja. Okay. So if we summarize what we learned in the last part of the Sukun, you see how we, we spoke about. The harakat, we spoke about the mad, then we spoke about when we have no vowels, it's sukun. We went through the basic application of the sukun, how to read it in words, and now we took it kind of a step further. Right, Mima said there are many tajweed elements that come in when letters have sukun. Now, here you've done your first, your first tajweed concept, right, when dealing with the sukun. These three letters and another two that we're still going to do, only five. These three letters, when they have sukun, they will be pronounced with a jerk sound. So you just need to know some letters are pronounced with a jerk when it has a sukun. And I, I didn't leave it at that. We said that we, we outlined the exact sound. We said with a b, it's like the b in biscuit. B, b, tu, b, tu. D, like the d in disc. D, d, tadri. The j, like as in just. J, j. Tajari. Excellent. Before I do an exercise, a very interesting exercise, which is basically going to also, um, everyone have to participate and it's going to basically be very beneficial and kind of summarize also what we've done so far. How did you guys find um, that basically, listen, is kind of complete. We just have an exercise to do. How, how is everyone so far with the support? And you'll note that I keep on emphasizing. And when I mean how is everyone, I mean like, did you understand? Perfection in, is going to grow with you. As long as you keep applying the, the principles that we learned in this lesson, you are only going to grow from strength to strength with the sukun.
Yes. 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 So Ikram made a good point that the Sukkot basically each, there'll be no additional sound except for the five exceptions. And that's the letters that we've done now. We've done three that they will have um, a, a extra sound that is a jerking sound. Right. And the reason why I put that in the class today is because if we don't learn it now, another opportunity of learning this might not come as easy as the opportunity is now, while we learn the sukun, learn the concept. It might be difficult now, but as it sink in, it's going to be better. Yes. So like I was just saying, like I said in the beginning, learning the sukun is like putting a magnifying telescope on the letters, right? You're taking everything away and it's just the raw letter and its sound. And in the next lesson, we're going to do some challenging letters and I'm going to give some very important advice about uh, what to do or how do you approach letters that you struggle with, that you just can't pronounce, right? Because there is kind of, uh, um, there is a way, there's a strategy of dealing with those letters. And um, we will speak about that in the next lesson. So let's start with this exercise. Okay. So this is how it's going to go. If you see this word over here, teth, teth, right there, that's a th with a sukun, teth, th with a sukun. What I am going to do, I am going to cover this letter and I'm going to replace that th with any letter. You won't know which letter it is. I'm going to pronounce it on the microphone. You won't see me. And you have to tell me which letter I am pronouncing with a sukun. Right. So, and now to make it easy, I'll put the letters here. So here's the references. You just have to give me the number. So you don't have to type out the name of the letter. So for example, if I say, let's do an example. I say, teth, teth, you would say, okay, it's the number three. Okay. So you guys understand then. Okay. So let's do the exercise. I'll switch my video off. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, let's do the first letter. Tach. Tach. Which letter is that? Tach. Tach. Wow, unanimous. Okay. Excellent. Okay, correct. Tach. Okay. Let's do the next one. Here we go. Tez. 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 Right, so someone is saying that, right? So that's a challenging one. It's not the not number eight, so it's 10. Tez. All correct. Tez. Perfect. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Here we go. Tah. 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 Just note that even though you might struggle with a letter, you are able to identify it. What that means is that you know exactly the sound of the letter ha. Now I'm gonna show you how, with that in mind, you'll all, you, 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 you can approach the letter that you struggle with, knowing that you already won half the battle, that you know the exact sound. You guys are right. It's a letter ha. Okay, here we go. Oops. Teth, let's hope you didn't see that. Teth. Okay, that's the either one you saw that already. Okay, here we go. Tez, 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 tez. Excellent. One hundred percent correct. Okay. 
تت تت اوف يو جايز ار فاست تت تت يونانيموس يونانيموس تت اوكي بيرفكت هير وي جو تر 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 unanimous you guys are getting nothing wrong okay you will see that we left with these letters over here we left with these three letters over here now leave them lost for a reason let's see okay so we have 1 2 3 okay let's do it the the Tad. 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 Now note that suddenly we have all the numbers in options. Okay, so that one is number three. Okay. Let's see this one over here. Tad, 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 tad. I'm going to tell you why. No joking, Sam. Tad. Number two. Let's do the last one, and then I'll you know, I'll reveal the purpose of this exercise. Here we go. Tad. 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 Lovely. It's again the letter Dal. Now, that brings us to the end of the lesson. Now, let me tell you the purpose of that, of that exercise. Who or someone asked the question, why is there no jerking sound? Yes, Muhammad Riza asked, why is there no jerking sound? Exactly, exactly. If these letters do not have the jerking sound, it will be very difficult to distinguish them from each other. When reciting the Quran, every letter should be distinct and clear. That's in a nutshell. Does that make sense? So what the Arabs done at the time, when they were, because they were most eloquent. So they found that these letters sound the same because there's a blockage of sound. Tab, tab, tab. So if I'm standing, if I was standing in front reading Salah and you are standing behind me and I say, tab, 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 it sounds the same. You're not sure what I'm saying. That's when it does not have the jerk sound. That is why it, it was not kind of an a, a unusual rule. It's a rule that follows common sense. So think about it in that way. These letters must have a jerking sound in order to be heard and differentiated from each other. So that is why the sound was added. So that's why instead of saying tab, it's tab. They added that, the Arabs added that sound in order so they can differentiate. Tab, tab, tad, tad, instead of tad, tad, because of that, that suppression blockage of sound that they have to be kind of a release in order for the sound to be heard. That brings us to the end of the lesson. I'll take any questions or any comments, uh, inshallah now. جزاك الله خير السلام عليكم